Good morning. Welcome to Bars and Bells. There's snow here. How about there? No matter where we are, we'll be connected with movement and strength. My name is Ian. And I'm Lauren. Thank you very much for joining us here today at the Beginner and Body Weight Kettlebell Extravaganza. Maybe not an extravaganza, but definitely an exercise session where we'll start with our breath, work on the basics, and then join us later next week or later time at a more advanced skills class. Today we'll hold weights and get started yep. with the breath. Position that's comfortable for you, I tend to stand in that squat stance. Place one hand on the, hand on the belly, the other on the chest, and with your mouth closed, a four second inhale to the belly. Make room, belly away from spine on the inhale, and now exhale, pulling the belly button into the spine. Repeat one more time down low, breath in, making room, and then exhaling. Keep the belly button pulled to spine, and now breath into the chest. And exhale. Repeat one more time into the chest, create room, and slow exhale. Let's return to the belly and take a big breath in, expanding full. And hold full for four seconds. Slowly exhale, pulling the belly button into the spine. Repeat in the chest, a four second breath in. And hold four seconds full. And slow exhale. Now take one more big belly breath in and then breath into the chest and then again and again and again and again and again and five more and slow mm. crocodile style out. Check in with your breath as we go through today's practice. Breathe underneath the shield when we're under load and breathe from that diaph diaphragm. Next, let's move to that head neck and modify your stance. If you're narrow, go wide. If you're wide, go narrow. At the head neck, we'll do our figure eight pattern, starting with our flexion or chin to sternum. Moderate chin flex neck flexion as the chin goes towards the sternum. Then I'm tracing my right clavicle to look towards Lauren and then looking up the wall to the ceiling in center. When in center, I'll pull the crown ahead high, chin towards the sternum, and then switch to looking left, up the left side wall, to center, reset in the middle. Let's return, repeat the figure eight pattern in the alternate direction. Starting with extension, or very moderate chin to ceiling effort, then look to the right hand side, down the wall, chin towards clavicle, find center. Now pull down on those scalenes to support the extension of the neck as we look to the ceiling and then to the left, looking down the wall, chin towards clavicle, then sternum and repeat to center. Next, let's open up that stance a little bit to be more like your hinge stance, your deadlift stance, your hinge or swing stance, chop. Chop those hips back, feel load on the ten tension on the hamstrings, and place the hands on the knees or quads. From this position, let's take a big belly breath in. The belly button may fall to the floor. Then on an exhale, pull that belly button into the spine. Nice and slow again, take a breath in. And exhale, pulling that belly button into the spine. Maintain strong breathing throughout, and now we'll do our posterior tip of the hips as to scoop the hips underneath, rounding the low back, and then press that tailbone away, extending the spine and then anterior tip of the hips. Repeat once or twice more as we scoop underneath, and then feeling that as we tip that tailbone back, that is our desired position for our hinge. One more time. We'll scoop, tucking under, tip, pressing that tail away, and then with the feet pressing into the ground, extend the hips and give it a little bit of that shake in the middle. Let's return to the hinge position, this time exploring the upper back or T-spine. 
Hinge, check, vertical shins, hands to knees. Moderate chin tuck or chin towards sternum. Retract the shoulder blades next. From here, flex through that upper back, pulling the rib cage towards the hips. Slight round. Slight round. And then press the sternum forward, minimizing the movement of the head. Repeat, pulling the rib cage to the hips, flexing or rounding that upper back like a cat. With the shoulders retracted, press the sternum forward. Repeat one last time as you flex. Are you pulling? Can you feel those abs work? And then that nice extension effort through the upper back, press the feet into the floor and extend to tall. One more time, exploring that upper body, this time in a little bit of a rib roll. With your feet underneath your hips or in a seated position comfortable for you, let's place hands across the chest. From here, we can rotate. Rotate that the upper body turns and then center. Can you do it that the head stays center <laughs> for the moment and the sternum points to one or two o'clock at the side? Then repeat this time with the head coming with center and then last time returning center. Let's add a little bit of the side bends and backwards bends to this rotation. First, rotate. Here I go rotating to the left. From here, I'll dip back to the back left hand corner and then candy cane or rib roll to center. And like earlier, pulling down on the abs to extend through the spine. Same but opposite direction. At our rotation, chin comes with that sternum. Dip towards that lateral back corner and then that rib rolling candy caning action to return center and tall. Let's connect from that corner to back around as we do half revolutions each way. Start with our rotation, check. Add our side flexion. Now this time we'll reach up and around the back like we're doing a hula around that bra line. Face a new corner and then rib roll all the way around the center and then tall. And the final time here, switch our direction in the rotation add the dip to the lateral back corner, and then towards that extension out the back, we'll face a new corner, and then rib roll around to center, extend in the tall position, and then shake and let it reset. From here, we'll hand off to Lauren, exploring the mobility get-ups and some planks. Excellent, welcome. Mobility get-up time. Standing up tall, pick an arm, Put it across your chest. The arm that's still at your side, tap that leg, step back to a step back lunge position. Before we descend, square up your hips and shoulders forward. Now we're gonna slowly come down, five seconds. As you're coming down, that front hip is pulling in as that back hip presses forward. Nice soft landing. From here, let's heel toe that foot open and start with a rotation. With our head in line with our sternum, Rotate the upper body towards that knee and then unrotate yourself back to center. Let's do that again. Head and sternum rotate at the same time. This time chopping on the hips, pushing your hips back. Hand finds the floor. From here, stack your shoulders. Shoulders stacked over top of that wrist. We'll add an extra rotation here again. This time head looks at your hand only and then head rotates back up, maybe even looking at the ceiling. Bring your head back to neutral. This time, head and shoulders rotate towards the floor, and then head and shoulders open up. Head doesn't rotate more than the center of that body. From here, we'll stack, keep stacked, sweeping that leg through to our tall sit. In our tall sit, let's check in with this shoulder. Right now, we're nice and proud that lat is engaged. Now, just for a second, be lazy, shrugging up into that ear. Undo that, pull down engaging lat, and then shrug, and one more time, pull down engaging that lat. Keep this nice, proud shoulder as you make your way to your elbow, and we're gonna do three of these. Nice, controlled lower part way, and then press yourself back up to that elbow. 
Two more. Nice controlled lower. Press back up to the elbow. And last one will end up on the floor. All the way down to your back with control. We're taking a little plank break here. We'll flip over and start with a regular plank this time and then we'll get to side planks next time. From a lying down position, fists in line with elbows and shoulders. Gently shrug your shoulders into your ears and then pull them down out of your ears. Now tuck your hips under, squeezing your glutes. Press the floor away just to your knees here. Feel that connection, ribs to hips. Start squeezing your butts. Either stay here or lift the knees and end up in that tall plank position. Pull the floor together underneath you. Make tight fists. Keep your shoulders packed and your lats engaged. Breathe underneath that shield. Squeeze your butts more. Three, two, and then control it down. Nice. Coming down, maybe adding a little extension into that. Take a couple seconds off and we'll do that one more time. Pack your shoulders. Tuck the hips under, pressing towards those knees first. Hips are in line with your shoulders. When you're ready, if you're ready, knees lift, hold. Five more seconds, high energy, meaning pull, pull, pull. Tension in every muscle. Keep it tight, couldn't move you, and soft landing. Whew. End up rolling to your back again. We're coming up on the same side we came down on. So cross that arm across your chest, set up in your get up position. That same leg is bent. You remember your get up I think position? So. I think so. Now, press your bent leg foot into the floor and feel that energy shoot up into its butt cheek and then relax it. Now do that again. Press so hard this time you start to roll and then you pull on your elbow. Check in here, we're at that nice packed shoulder position. Find your hand, keep your shoulder packed as you do that. Adjust your foot as needed. Let's go to a high bridge and just pause for a second. High bridge, little hold. Three, two, take that long leg, sweep it through. Hand presses away, hips extend. Front foot moves to that lunge position. Both legs drive down to help you to tall. Shake it out, same thing. Other side, hopefully I remember all the things I did. Other side, step back the other leg, control down, we're square forward, four, three, Two, soft landing. Heel toe to open that leg to the side. And first we started with a rotation, our head and sternum in line as we rotate our upper body towards over that knee. Pull yourself back to center. Do it again. Rotate that upper body. This time chop the hips, pushing them back. Hand finds the floor. Before you go anywhere, stack those shoulders. Let's square up our head and shoulders to the floor. This is where I knew I'd forget. Head keep first. Head first. <laughs> right now, sorry, keep your shoulders open. Head looks at your hand, and then head looks at the ceiling. And then closing back up. This time, close the shoulders towards the floor. And keeping the head now in line with the middle of the chest, rotate open. Take a little breath as you're there. Close back up. One more time, we'll open and stay open here. Head stays in line. When you're ready, sweeping that back leg through. Ooh, wrong way. <laughs> yeah. From our proud shoulder here to slumpy dumpy. Pressing the floor away, engaging that lat. Keep the lat engaged as you find your elbow. Three times to the floor, halfway down, and then pull back up, halfway down, pull back up, last time ending up on your back, keeping that shoulder packed and proud. Uh. Nice. From here, we'll roll to a side. Pick a side. On your side, you'll be on your elbow, which will be right underneath your shoulder, even maybe tucked in a little bit more. Knees are in line with hips, hips are pushing forward, so right away, Press those hips forward. Take your top hand. Touch your bottom abs, your ribs, your obliques, whatever you'd like to call them. Just touch them, hello. Now, be slumpy and kind of go towards the floor here. Hips stay on the floor as you pull your rib cage away. With that hand, you can feel those obliques working. Feel that tension and then relax. Let's add to that. 
Feel that tension by pulling the obliques inside away from the floor. Keep pulling so your hips now lift up. Extend your hips forward, keeping your shoulders stacked. Feel that work through that lower ab side and hold. I like to kind of pull my elbow towards my knee as well to create tension in my lat for three, two, soft landing. Safely come out of that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Feels great. I think that's the hardest position to plank in. It is really hard. Plank. Knees are stacked, hips pressing forward. Elbow under, excuse me, underneath the shoulder. Take your top hand, gently place it on your bottom ribs. And again, engage those lats as well as obliques to start lifting your rib cage away from the floor and just feel that tension underneath. And then relax. Let's add on. Repeat by pulling up, engaging the side obliques, and then keep lifting to pull the hips away from the floor. Extend the hips forward so they're stacked on top of one another as well as our shoulders. Create that tension by pulling the floor together underneath, supporting the tree trunk core, and continuing to breathe for four, three, two. Control to your back. Flip over to your backside. We should get back up just to make it even, but we'll have to come back down after. All right, lying on our back, it's our other side gets back up. Pushing your foot into the floor, feel that muscle energy go up to the butt cheek and then relax. Do it again so much you end up pulling on the floor to the elbow. Find your hand, keeping that shoulder packed and proud. Bridging, holding for a couple seconds and then sweeping that leg underneath. Hand leaves the floor, hips extend forward. Front foot moves to our lunge position. Both legs drive into the floor to get you to tall. Whew, nice. First little get up of the day. You got it. We're up here, we have our bells at our sides. Do you? Let's just do one quick hinge, body weight style, but have the bell out in front just to prep the swing or that deadlift as we go forward here. I'll come a little bit to the front. Straddle that load as if it's that deadlift. The handle of your bell should be bisecting the legs down below. The shins. The shins. <laughs> That's the right word. From here, we'll chop on those hip flexors. And without looking at the kettlebell, I'm looking a couple feet ahead of me here, just touch the bell. Then grip the bell. Then pack those shoulders. Without leaving the floor, can you feel how heavy that kettlebell is in the hands? But more importantly, can you feel that load on your abs and your hips? Let go, come up barehanded. Let's repeat one more time. As you go through today's practice, we'll end up swinging. If swinging isn't quite for you, refine your deadlift hinge with bodyweight drills like this. Same thing the last time, we'll chop the hinge. Place the hands on the kettlebell, and as Lauren's cued in the get-ups, pack the shoulders. Crush the handle, pack the shoulders, and only pretend right now to lift that bell, feeling tension on the hips, core, lats. Gently let relax, and then up. Feel tension in the feet, feel tension through those hamstrings and glutes. Avoid the tension manifesting in the lumbar spine. Position the hips just right, take your time, and with Lauren's hip drill here, will increase some of the mobility in the hips. To the floor, no rules, but Lauren's cueing for the lunge might be great. So Let's there are no rules. <laughs> There's no rules, no rules. Take your time to the floor, nice and controlled in the lunge if you wish. Now go for it. From all fours, we'll be doing our quick hip circles. It doesn't have to be quick, our hip circles. Watch before you come out to all fours because I know it's hard to see when you're down here. It's gonna look like this, but a little bit slower. Knee bends, kicking your butt. Keeping the tail long, we'll bring in the knee towards our chest. We'll lift it out to the side and we'll slowly draw that circle all the way around to the back. Once you're at the back, making sure our hips are square, pulling that leg underneath, keeping the tailbone long. Then we'll reverse it for one, kicking the ceiling, opening up to the side, keeping this side long as we reach around knee towards elbow, returning to that hip flexion, and resting where we started. Ready? Oh yeah. Come on down. 
hands under shoulders. I like to have my toes tucked. I find that provides a little more stability. Take a single leg, whichever one you're doing, and before you even lift the knee, kick your butt with your ankle. Now from here, just lift that knee a little bit off the floor. Keep the tailbone slightly tilted towards the ceiling as you bring your knee towards your chest. Hold that hip flexion for a second. Now bring the leg out to the side. From here, the ankle might lift as the knee draws a circle around the back. It'll end up out the back behind you, kicking the ceiling, hold. Feel that glute stay square to the floor. Keep the tailbone long as you pull the knee under so that the quads get parallel and then reverse it. Kicking the ceiling again, this time connect ribs to hips, could take a punch. Open the leg up to the side. Knee draws around towards the elbow, keeping the tail long. It pulls underneath towards your chest and comes back to parallel to rest on the floor. Take a second off your wrist and we'll do the same thing on the other side from the all fours position. Gently bend the other knee, imagining you're keeping a hundred dollar million dollar bill behind your knee. A million dollar bill. Million. Gently tilt your tail to the ceiling. Slowly bring the knee towards the chest, then lift it out to the side. Continue to draw that circle around towards the back as you reach behind you, kicking the ceiling, engaging the glute, staying square to the floor. Now bring that knee towards parallel, keeping the tailbone long, reversing it gently, reaching to kick to the ceiling. Take that punch in the abs here, open up the leg to the side, keeping long between the ribs and the hip as the knee comes around towards the elbow, underneath towards the chest, and then places down. Whew. Mm. Press the floor away, take a second off those wrists. We've done two variations of our planks yet so far today and finish on the backside in our back bridge or backside plank. Take your time, anyhow, no rules, <laughs> get to the back. With the palms up at the hips or out front like the top of your swing, let's roll up that spine, starting with the feet heavy and then that posterior tuck of the hips as to scoop or peel up off the floor. Approach that tall planks position, squeeze your abdominals, pull the knees together, press your feet in the floor, and for five more seconds, breathe, brace, squeeze your glutes, and maintain your breath. Relax the tension, and then like a cat cow, roll from the top of the spine, down, making sure that the belly button or the behind the belly button place touches the floor before your buttocks. Let's repeat one more time. Start with the feet, grip hard into the floor, then scoop the hips away, extending the hips away from the floor, straight line from the knee to hips to shoulders. Yeah, we're gonna maintain high tension here as our knees pull together, our glutes squeeze, our feet grip the floor, our core braces, those armpits pull, and then relax the tension and roll down with control. From here, it'll be the last time we get up in our get up today. So choose your side, place one hand across the chest, extend through the hip, pulling on the elbow, and then next to the tall sit. Bridge, lovely pause in the middle like before, and then sweep, press the floor away, square up the lunge, <gasps> hi -ya on those abs for our tall stand. Loaded carries coming up with me, but first squats with Maura. All right, three position squats. We're gonna be breaking them down. Position number one, parallel, standing up tall. For five in a row, knees press over toes, shoulders stay stacked over top of hips. Drive into the floor, extend to tall, pulling your kneecaps up, squeezing your glutes, bracing your core every single time. Do it again, knees press over toes, and then drive down and away to tall. Two more, uh, three more. Knees press over toes, drive down and away to tall. Last two, knees press over toes, keep that stacked position and tall. And one more, knees press over toes. We'll push down and away to tall. This time find a two-legged balance up here, pulling the kneecaps up, squeezing everything tight maybe looking around the room while you're up here. Come back to center and with control, 
descend the heels towards the floor. Keep your knees nice and straight and shake it out. Hmm. More to come. More to come on those squats. Let's return to that kettlebell and pick it up with that deadlift hinge. Maybe if this is new for you, use those two hands and hold it in center. If you've been with us before, let's look to carry it and one arm off to the side. For that, we'll chop those hips, grip with one hand, making sure the shoulders are square. Pack the shoulder, take a sniff in, and <gasps> tall stand. Holding for 30 seconds here at the side. Keep that arm out to the side as a little bit of that flying Walinda bracer long lever on a tightrope. Avoid falling off to the heavy side of the bell. So recruit the other side of the body to hold it nice and strong. It's been 20 seconds, we'll aim for 10 seconds more. Other modifications could include slow walks, weight transfers, but return to two feet, two feet, hand, sorry, bell to the floor, and then body weight it up. It takes your breath in your words. It work. does, it's hard to concentrate on that. So we'll shake it out in between, take a breath, and then preload. How heavy is it before it actually leaves the floor? Let your body catch up to that information. Grip it square, take a sniff, yep, and to tall. Modify your stance as you need. Avoid again falling to that heavy side of the kettlebell. Recruit those other side abs to stay nice and tall. Weight transfers between rights and left feet, or even a side step can definitely add to the challenge of holding this load. We'll hold it for five more seconds. Squeeze your butt, brace your core, maintain your breath, and then open your stance, return to the floor, come up barehanded, and then shake. Ha. Ah. <sighs> Squat set two. Squat set number two. Start in your parallel position, then squeeze your glutes and pivot on your heels to rotate to that first position, or a V. From here, before you go anywhere, pull the floor together so your legs are tight, tight, tight. Feel that adduction tension. Then keep pulling, but press the knees towards over the toes. From here, drive down and away to extend to tall. Hips press through, glutes squeeze. Do it again. Pulling together to send the knees to the side, driving down and away to tall. Hips extend. Three more. Knees over toes. Stay stacked here. Press down and away. Knees over toes. You might have to have that slight tuck of the tailbone. Press down and away. Try not to get your butt touching anything behind you. Do you know what number this was, Ian? This is five. Press down and away. Grow up into your two-legged balance. Kneecaps pull up. Hips are pressing forward. Look around the room if you can here. Coming back to center with control and then keeping the knees straight. Slowly descend and shake it out. <sighs> Carries number two. Carries number two. For this one, we'll be cheek cleaning that kettlebell up the body to catch it in the goblet hold position. You can also get into it through the squat. But for today, let's just look to refine that hinge. Stand over top of the kettlebell, chop on those hip flexors, two hands on the top. We pack shoulders, we preload, and in one movement, we zip that kettlebell up the body. Modify your stance if you need. This is gonna to be tougher for me to maintain my breath and control. But with bum squeezes, core braces, keep those elbows into the bell and support the load out front with the strength of the back and the abs. Avoid that kettlebell from resting on the body. We'll hold for a couple extra seconds. Again, weight transfers front and back. Left and right can add to the difficulty of this drill. Couple seconds extra and then return to the floor <sighs> and wiggle that out. Squat variation, body weight squat variation number three, a little bit wider this time. A little bit wider. From that seconds position, or kind of like your hinge, you'll just slightly turn out your feet position. Now, again, before you go anywhere, keep your knees straight and just pull the floor together underneath you. I feel not only my adductors, but I also feel my arches of my feet engaged. So feel that tension as you then press your knees towards over your toes and then drive down and away and stand up tall. Do it again. Pull the floor together, tucking under slightly, imagining, pressing away. You're between two walls. Pull the floor together, 
Don't hit your butt on the wall behind you. Press away. Try to pry those knees back just a little bit. And away. I believe we have one last one. Staying up tall, staying stacked. Drive down and away. Keep growing up to find this balance again. Nice straight knees. Trying to push the inseams and the heels forward. Change your gaze. Come back to center. Keep the knees straight as the heels both find the floor at the same time. Whew. Shake it out. Checking out. One more time for our last unique carry for today. The rack hold. The rack hold. This time we'll get the pistol grip or same grip as we had with a parallel handle. Grip on, other hand to support. Pulling up to that rack's position. <laughs> Not sure if that made sense. We'll work on that cueing in quickly. a second. Why don't you show us here? All right, my mistake. So again, single hand on the bell. The other hand helps support. Pre-loading, Zip. zipping up your jacket, and this time holding with one hand with that flexed elbow. Returning to the floor, repeating right and left sides with our wiggles in between. Now we know what we're doing. All right, All my right. mistake. Same thing, right side for me as I put my right hand on, I'm standing right over top of that bell, left hand to support, preload and zip up into that rack and hold for 20 seconds. Squeeze your bum, maintain that rib cage to hip connection and vertical forearm. The load is out front, but we're recruiting through the shoulder blade and back, and of course those abs to stay strong. Open your stance, two hands on the bell, and return to the floor like it's nothing. Same thing on the other side. Hip hinge, hand on, support with the other, preload, zip up the body, and again to that rack position. Modify your stance. There's benefits to being super narrow, benefits to being nice and wide. Find the right position for you and get used to our friend, the kettlebell. Five more seconds, squeeze your bum, push your feet into the floor, two hands on the bell, and return. And the shake. Hmm. Ah, nothing to it. Nothing to All it. All right, we warmed up our squats. You know what that means? We get to load them a little bit. Load them up. We'll be holding our bell in that goblet position that we practiced earlier, so we could be stepping over top of our bell, doing our hinge pull catch, and then stepping into a squat stance. From here, we'll pull ourselves down and hook, drive to tall. Repeat a couple times. Hinge to put the bell down, up without. Ready? Awesome. What's our number? Five. Whew. Five's nice. Standing over top of your bell. Use your hinge, gripping the top of the bell. Pull, re-grip down the horns. Step your feet as needed to your squat. Feel that tension as you pull down and then drive away brace core. Pulling down with control, driving away. Bell isn't resting on your body. Elbows are in tight. Core is braced the whole time. And feel the tension on the down and the up. Use your hinge, up without. Whew. Nice. After some heavy metal like that, let's prep our push-pull or groove exercise to get overhead. In a stance comfortable for you, mine would be just outside of my hips with my feet. Take a single hand and place it to that rack's position. Very low effort, press the arm towards overhead. If the overhead position ends up out front, that's okay. If it looks like Lauren in line with the bicep, that is what we're going for as well. So with the arm overhead, can we now elevate or shrug the shoulder? Then from the armpit, the notorious armpit will pull. When we're out of room with a straight elbow, continue to pull or bend the elbow, returning to the rack. Repeat one more time, low intensity up. Again, if it's out front, that's okay. We're keeping those ribs to hips and with the arm overhead, we'll shrug just once, lightly elevating or shrugging. Now with a stiff elbow, we'll pull or pack from the shoulder. And when it's out of room, allow that elbow to bend, returning to the rack position. Wiggle it out and repeat on the other side. Rack's position, easy effort to overhead. 
the Y shape is okay, or the I shape like Lauren's straight overhead is also ideal. Elevate the shoulders as a shrug, and then pull or pack. Then continue to pull through the elbow, returning the, el the elbow and arm to the rack position. Low effort overhead one last time, ideally in line with the ear. Then we'll shrug up from that armpit place, pull down, and then continue to groove our pull, bending the elbow to that rack position. Shake it, wiggle it, and then it's time to squat again. Time to squat again. Round two, five squats, same routine, over top of your bell. Use your hinge, gripping the top. Pull, re-grip to goblet hold. Step your feet as needed. Pull yourself down. Drive down and away to tall. Pull, no flopping down. Control both directions on this squat. Two more. Feel that tension. Feet are gripping the floor. And up. from here we'll re-grip, hinge, up without. Whew. All good. Five squats is all I need today. Let's return to that rack position for one more time today. This time, imagine there's a heavy load on top of those knuckles, as if Lauren or I are pressing down. Now, try to press overhead. And then relax. Can you pretend to have that tension in your armpit grip loaded through the core? Press your feet in the floor, find your standing plank, and make it imaginary, but hard work, to press the arm overhead. Start in the rack, feet where you wish, full body tension. Then engage your armpit pulling down, pressing the fist towards overhead. Again, if it's out front, that's okay. While we're out front, we'll push or protract that shoulder, and then retract, and then continue to pull the elbow to the ribs. Repeat one last time. Pull down to go up. In my case, I'm going up and out. 500 Lauren pounds. will try that overhead position, biceps to ear, and then elevate the shoulders as to shrug. Retract, pull, and then continue to pull the elbow to the ribs. Shake it out one last time on the other side. Overhead improvements can we help with that cat cow, rib rolls, and going slow. Avoid loading this movement until you're super confident and your ranges match Lauren's. Rack position, press towards overhead. In my case, I'll be going out front. From here, I'll protract or shrug that shoulder out, retract, and then pull, engaging to the, to the ribs. One more time. Pretend there's resistance, find that tension and stability in the armpit to allow us to go overhead. Then shrug and pack retract and then continue to pull into the racks position. Let's load that soon, but take our time as we work towards pressing overhead. A super fun, but not always easy challenge. Last set of squats. Last set of squats. Ooh. Five, goblet, same routine over top of your bell, hinge, pull, catch, goblet, hold, zip, step your squat stance, and feel that tension on the down, feel the hup on the hup, pull down, hup to tall, pull down, elbows in, bell's still off your chest, hup, one last time, and hup, hinge, place the bell down with control, up without. Ooh. Nice. Shaking it out. Nice dose of squats for today. Yeah. I'm going to let Lauren choose here. There's two more things that are on our menu. One's a little bit tougher and one's a little bit easier. How do you think we should finish today? Uh, both. Both. Three rounds of the one thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> I thought I could get off the hook, but that's okay. Our harder thing is going to be some squats. Nope. Some <laughs> swings and some push-ups. For the past couple of weeks, we work in this I go, you go way. Lauren does five swings, then I do five swings. Today we'll do the same, except five swings followed by a set of push ups. Join us on Fridays, Restore and Recharge to refine those push up grooves, positions of the elbows, and working on our cadence. 
For today's practice, Lauren will do five swings to start, followed by how many push-ups? Three. Three push-ups. Pick your number, and as we go through this for four quick rounds, let's try to hit the same numbers each time we do it. Team Lauren, you're up first, or if you're not sure what's going on, watch first and then follow me. Five swings. The deadlift, the bodyweight hinge, other versions of this movement are appropriate. Challenge with the swing, be patient. After five swings, it's Team Lauren again to walk out and rep out that number of press-ups, push-ups that you decide. In Lauren's case, it's that magic number three. Her third push-up, Team Ian will assemble with the bell. And they'll start swinging. Second team swings as we rest, shaking it out. If you're swinging, you're driving into the floor, extending those hips and bracing the core every time. Even if you're deadlifting, you're doing that as well. Your bell is down. Your push-up number is picked. What is it? Two, three. I just want to be like you, Lauren. Nice. I just want to be like nice. you. No matter the number, better reps are better than more reps. High quality reps. From here, five swings. Those body weight groove deadlifts. The carries are also appropriate. Integrate those where you need. After five swings, we park that bell, making sure you can sidestep it so you don't bonk your head. And push ups, excuse me, here for number three, two, and last one. My turn to swing. All right, team Ian, round two here, five swings. If you are swinging, you're matching that exhale as the hips snap through, so you can really create that nice brace. Now it's push-up time. Let's see how much tension Ian has in his body when he does his push-ups. Couldn't move him. Oops, that was your microphone, sorry. Couldn't move him. I'm not sure if that was three. That was three. That's Abs three. and glutes brace three off. Oh my goodness. Working on some strength in our earlier sets. My heart rate wasn't as high as it is right now, but now we're working on some of that strength and endurance. Start strong, finish stronger, park the bell, and a third set of push-ups, taking Lauren's total to nine. That's one and two, and solid like a rock. We don't even need to pretend on that when we know tension engaged. Swing team in, here we go. The sweat is beginning. All right, five swings, playing a little bit of that chicken game on the way down and keeping the shoulders retracted in the topmost position, which is that chest level. Walk himself out. Another set of push-ups here. Round three of four. Two, keeping it tight. Oh yeah. Nice. Last round. Last set. Starting strong and finishing stronger is something we say all the time. Maintaining integrity, speed, power, and that form word as we go through today's practice. A little more tired than I was earlier, but definitely feeling charged up from this experience versus feeling I need to peel myself up off the floor. Work smarter, not harder, and there's push-ups, and team more and you're done. Three, Whew. All right, team Ian, last round here. Finishing strong. Every swing is trying to be the same with that delay on the down and the snap on the up. Nice clean arc of the bell. And last set of push-ups. Keeping that head in line with the body, the abs brace, the core tension, even though you're doing push-ups. Oh, and then team Ian, stay down, stay down. Ah, there we go. Now we can finish with the other. Finish that last menu option here, a little bit of dessert for breakfast here. Watch your belt. And just set up in your 90 position. Proud shoulders like Lauren instructed in the lunge. And from here, take a look at the hand, elbow on the floor with the head neck. Then let that upper body follow in a rotation. Then open with the head first, looking to the ceiling and follow with the rib cage. And then look back to the hand, elbow, <laughs> and then rotate the upper body closed. Return that sternum and head neck to forward. And for one last time here, let's talk about that lunge or the hips. Bottom leg, compress in, pulling in as this top hip butt squeezes, extends forward. Pull in on that bottom leg and press forward on the top and relax your tension. One more time, compress or pull in on that bottom leg, extend squeezing butts, hips on the top 
pulling in on the bottom, pushing forward on the top for an extra second or two, and then relax. And anyhow that's good for you, transition to the other side. Set up that 90-90 position or the lunge where the shin on one leg is about parallel with the foot on the other side. I like my feet in that dorsiflex position. With the hips slightly forward, let's just pay attention to the upper body, looking with the head and neck at the elbow first, and then closing the rib cage or upper body. Then look to the ceiling with the head and neck, open up through that rib cage. Close with the head and neck and close with the rib cage. Return back to that center position, sternum pressing forward, bottom leg, compress in, slurping up all that energy and then squeezing that top hip forward in extension. Holding for about 10 seconds, easing off the tension with a relaxed effort. And then for one last time, we'll pull in on that bottom leg extending the hip forward with their butt squeeze on the top. Stretch the quad, feel the load on the front, but strengthen the hips in the back. And then relax. Press yourself to an easy position to recover in. And thank you very much for being with us here today. My name's Lauren. I'm Ian. And on, oops. On Wednesdays, we stay <laughs> strong with our kettlebell basics. Yes. That was you my know it. Ian impression. You know it. Thanks for joining us today. We'll do this again next week. Tomorrow morning at 8.15, we have our live bar class. It's a great time. You should come join us, whether it's live or in the archive. You know it. Until then, stay strong, take care, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.